I'm gonna do this. Good afternoon. In the name of St. John the Evangelist, welcome to all parishioners and visitors who join us to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. In addition, we extend sincere welcome to all who join us digitally. We are so blessed to be able to congregate today, even while we respect and observe both the governor's and the archbishop's recommendations regarding the recent surge in the pandemic. While we gather for Mass and sacraments, please continue to pay extra attention to maintaining six feet distance in our seats and when moving about the church. Continue to follow the marked entrances and exits. Take time to sanitize your hands often, and thank you for wearing your mask. Our Mass today is being offered for Louis Cremissino. Please silent all cell phones. I will now lead the Archdiocesan Prayer for Vocations. Please join with its intention in your heart. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless this Archdiocese with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve your Church and to make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, Choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. Amen. Louis Cremesino. We are offering this Mass Day for Louis Cremesino. Lois. Lois. Oh, excuse me, I still got it wrong. Lois Cremesino. Shadows <laughs> 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the great feast day of Jesus Christ, King of the universe. So as we approach Jesus as a great and powerful king, a humble king who desires us to be like him in service to one another, let us take a moment, acknowledge our sins, and ask the Lord for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nothing I 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty, and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed will be death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me. In prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from you, me, you accursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? And he will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, 
you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, you heard me speak about the billions and billions of stars in our galaxy, and the billions and billions of galaxies there are, the vastness of the universe, and how our Earth is a small, tiny little speck, and us seven billion human beings are little tiny specks on a little tiny speck. And yet, each one of us is unique and special in God's eyes. And he loves us all infinitely and unconditionally. This is the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ the King. Jesus comes to us in all God's majesty and glory in a very unusual way, doesn't he? He comes to us as a little babe at Bethlehem, born to poor peasants. The shepherds who live on the fringe of society, very poor. They have very little, and they are the first to pay homage to the newborn king, to welcome him into this world. Truly remarkable. As Jesus travels around Judea and Galilee in his public ministry, he is tempted to do even greater miracles. Remember Satan, when he goes into the desert, says to him, See all these kingdoms. If you kneel down and worship me right now, I will give them all to you. Jesus could have been a great king, the earth. But instead, what does he do? He says, his response is, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone. Jesus renounces earthly power for the sake of the kingdom. He brings us a whole other understanding of what it means to be a child of God. In humility, in humbleness, in service, we are called to imitate Jesus. Jesus doesn't go to the king's He doesn't go, so to speak, to the scribes and Pharisees. He doesn't become one of them. But rather he goes to the tax collectors, the Protestants. I'm sorry, that was a wrong thing to say. The, the prostitutes. Forgive me, I'll get in trouble for that one. For public sinners. Jesus goes to the poorest of the poor, the little, those who are nothing in the eyes of the world. And he is labeled a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Even when he is on the cross, if you look at the, actually doesn't have it on this crucifix, but on most crucifixes, you have that little piece of paper that says the crime that the person committed as they're being crucified. And Pontius Pilate wrote on Jesus' the king of the Jews. And those present, those Jews who were angry, bitter, wicked, 
They wanted that taken down. Or said differently, that Jesus said he was the king of the Jews. That's why they're putting him to death. In all humility, humiliation, sadness and pain and suffering, Jesus on the crucifix sits on his throne. The crucifix is Jesus' throne. And by it, he opens up the gates of heaven for all. It is humanity's worst moment. It is humanity's best moment. Jesus is a great king. The greatest king of all time. He is more than a king. He is God. Jesus is God. And we come here, especially this weekend, to worship Jesus Christ as our Lord and King in all humility. And as he suffers through his life here on earth, as he reveals to us what it means to be a child of God. We learn and we grow. We hear the stories and the Gospels read to us, proclaimed to us. And hopefully we can take his example and imitate him to become what he has called us to be. I think that we have to be very, very conscious of the gravity of the situation we find ourselves in. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Jesus is clear about that today. huh? Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. We have free will. And we can choose light and truth and goodness and beauty. We can choose love, peace, joy, service, unselfishness, self-giving, virtue, good values, high principle. We can choose all those things. Or we can slide into the abyss, into darkness, by choosing sin and death and darkness. The choice is stark and it is clear. God wants us all. He destines all of us to be with him in heaven as part of his family. He wants us all and gives us every opportunity. And even when we turn away, he pursues us. But ultimately, we have that scary gift of free will. And we can say no to God. He will allow it. In his desire for friendship with us, we have that ability. And so I ask all of you, let us redouble our efforts. Let us choose God. Let us choose life, goodness, and beauty, truth. Let us continue to come and worship our God here at the altar of sacrifice. Let us pay him his homage. For he is truly our king and the king of the world. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, King of the universe, we give you thanks for you have made us worthy to share your reign with the, your saints. Hear the prayers of your servants who come to your throne in great humility. For our shepherds in the church, that they may diligently look after and attend God's sheep, bringing back the strayed, binding up the injured, healing the sick, and shepherding us rightly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all sovereignties, authorities, and powers that are in opposition to God, that they may be brought under subjection to Christ the King, that God may be all in all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the most vulnerable, those living on the peripheries of society, the forgotten, the overlooked, the abandoned, the unborn, that they may find comfort and dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we who have the Lord as our shepherd, who want for nothing under his care, may reach out to those who do not yet know God as Savior and friend, and lead them to Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those on our prayer list, that they may feel the guiding press of the Divine Shepherd's staff, leading them to restful waters and the anointing of joy and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, that Christ, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, may bring all who belong to him rejoicing into his Father's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, your Son redeemed us by his death on the cross and left us the supreme example of unselfish love. May this example inspire in us the desire to follow in his footsteps by a life of generous service. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our King and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Offering these prayers spoken, those deep within our hearts unspoken, through our blessed mother's immaculate heart, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. to you see 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as the eternal priest and king of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal kingdom and a universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace, and so with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her beloved spouse, St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. I invite those who are joining us online to pray together the act of spiritual communion, which can be found in the digital worship aid. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. of this 
cup and declare his death. Eat this bread and believe his sermon. Trust and return and with every breath praise the one in whom you are reborn. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until Today's second collection will be deposited into our general second collection fund. In part, this outreach fund supports grants to service agencies and St. John's assistance programs. One of the agencies we support with our second collection outreach fund 
is the Franciscan Brothers of Peace. Like their namesake, the Franciscan Brothers are committed to serving and defending the most vulnerable in our society, the preborn, the severely disabled, survivors of torture, the poor, and the homeless. Our grant will be used to provide food, clothing, and hygiene items for those in need. Thank you for your continued support of our second collection outreach. Many of you are likely wondering what the governor's latest mandate means to our services. We are very blessed to be able to continue to receive the sacraments and attend Mass live and in person for all who are healthy and able, even while following these latest restrictions. It is so important that we take great care to maintain our social distancing standards and wear a mask. Archbishop Hebda addresses current pandemic best practices in a video which we have posted on our website. Considering this, in an abundance of caution, we are moving next weekend's Discipleship Sunday online. We hope you still attend this virtual event. Join us live on Facebook at 9.45 a.m. Sunday, November 29th. Pickup packets will be available. Details are being finalized, so check our website and watch your email for updates this week. Daily Mass scores. Because the school has off this week for an extended Thanksgiving break, our Wednesday Mass time will be 8 a.m. instead of 11.10 a.m. with the students. So Mass on Wednesday at 8 a.m. Thanksgiving Mass will be held at 9 a.m. Thursday, November 26th. In observance of the holiday, both the school and parish offices will be closed Wednesday, November 25th through Sunday, November 29th. But the vestibule between the front parish office doors will continue to be accessible for those wishing to drop off or pick up anything in our secure lockbox on the wall. I will still hold confessions and daily mass at the usual times on Friday, November 27th. Please check our online calendar. In the past two weeks, our annual giving tree has raised more than $1,200 virtually. Some of the gifts these dollars will go toward include Chromebooks to support our expanding St. John's School enrollment. Um, and if I can make a quick commercial, the school enrollment is now at 201. So isn't that great? Our enrollment at the school is 201. So that we do need um, to expand our Chromebooks for the new students. Uh, winter clothing and personal care items for Cabrini Partnerships and winter toys, pots and pans for Teresa Living Center. Thank you for continuing to take virtual ornaments from our giving tree this year. Visit our website today. I have a message on behalf of our school children. Thank you so very much for your generosity during our Give to the Max campaign. Parishioners and alumni alone helped raise more than $5,700 by the end of the day this past Thursday. Thank you for choosing to celebrate with us today. Please come back and worship with us again. Please stand and let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, the Lord Archangel, Angel, defend us in battle. battle. Be, Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May Be God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Jesus lives, who once was dead, shall 
shout with joy, O deathless voices, child of God, lift up your head. Patriarchs from distant ages, saints and longing for their hand. Prophets, soldiers, seers, and sages, all await the glory given. Life eternal, for oh, what wonders, crowd of faith, what joy unknown. When amid earth's closing thunder, saints shall stand.